Thank you very much for keeping it why in the morning. It is a very fine Monday morning. If at all you're just joining us, you are just in time for the next conversation of the day and the last of uh, conversation of today right here on Y254. My name is Ram Aguko. Thank you very much for keeping it Y254 TV. Imagine. Well, today, let's have a conversation on alcohol and addiction. This has been an issue that many people fight and in different uh, in, in, in a ways we all fight alcoholism and addiction uh, you know with family with friends but today we are having this conversation with a reverend that is reverend lawrence mbugwa he is from the emmanuel anglican community church in Raleigh, in that is in North Carolina. Garibusana Reverend. Thank you. Thank he, you. He, he, he's somebody who is here to give us his story about uh, you know this conversation. So make sure that you be part of it. Send us your thoughts, your questions as we continue. The hashtag as always is why in the morning at Ram Aguko and at Y254 channel. This conversation is going to be interesting because as we hear the story of a reverend who is talking about alcohol, why did, did you know did he choose to uh, you know start a conversation like alcohol and you know addiction for a reverend? It's it's, it's not something that is common. Well, uh, I want to thank uh, you this morning and all Y254 KBC crew and mm -hmm. uh, those who have. Uh, invited me this morning to come here so that we can have a discussion on alcoholism and uh, drug abuse in Kenya. I am so excited mm. and happy that we can even address this topic. I came to uh, just like this topic because I'm a recovered alcoholic. Uh -huh. I was not born a reverend. I was not born sober. So I started drinking at uh, quite an early age because my parents were, were making the local traditional brew. We call it Moratina in Kikuyu. Uh -huh. So I could, be, mm -hmm. I could be the one who was being told to prepare it, to prepare the water and the, and the sugar before it, it started to, uh, to ferment. So as you prepare, you So as I you, you prepared take a sip. from the first step of it, I could take a sip. Then when I put it on the gourd so that it can be brewed, mm -hmm. after a few days I mm -hmm. could also sip it. And when the old wazes would come and also uh, want to taste whether the beer is good, I would be told to go and get it for them. <laughs> and so my parents, uh, my father, instead of uh, preparing me, was preparing me a drunkard without his knowledge. And so this got into me and even when I went to school and did school certificate, uh, unfortunately, my parents died when I was too young, mm -hmm. and uh, I was mad with God at that time mm -hmm. uh, because my parents, my dad and my mom, they had a span of just one year before they they joined the heavenly kingdom. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and at that time, I was like around 16, 17, and I became mad with God and and and, and mad with life, and so. I started uh, drinking and I started uh, a life that was not worth it and I did it for like 10 years. Drinking from, for 10 years? Drinking same, for 10 years. Same Moratina? Not same Moratina. I graduated from drinking Moratina to, to drinking Changa. And I became like a vagabond, as you call them. Mm. And, uh, but the fortunate thing that uh, had happened to me is my parents died when I had already done my school certificate. The, and the, 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 the secondary one? Yes, or the, I or the, had or the, or the primary one? The, the secondary one. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, I had uh, graduated from secondary school mm -hmm. and uh, my life became a, a, a life of uh, an alcoholic and one day after 10 years I, 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 had, I had an experience that um, I felt I'm not doing the right thing so I decided it was 31st of December 1985. I decided that I am going to have a life change and I decided to stop drinking. I, start, I stopped, I said I will stop even smoking bang because I would smoke now and then. So I decided to live a sober life. And uh, because I didn't go to a rehab, it became mm -hmm. like a battle in itself because mm -hmm. my body already had uh, had uh, really been um, 
addicted to alcohol. With so, so I was, the, that withdrawal was Yeah, the withdrawal problem. was so tough. I didn't go to a rehab. Mm -hmm. But uh, after one and a half months, that is 86, 20th of February, 1986, I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. And from that time, I, I tell people, and that is the plain truth, mm -hmm. Jesus became my hero because I became a new person, just as the Word of God says, mm -hmm. that he who is in Christ is a new creation. I became a new creation. I, I, I cannot tell you how it all came, but I recovered fully and I started preaching in our local church. Mm -hmm. I joined the youth group. And uh, the journey became uh, very, very exciting. You started preaching in 1986. 1986. The journey became very exciting mm -hmm. as a youth. And uh, after a while, that is, uh, after a number of years, I'll cut a long story short, mm. I, I got an opportunity to go to school, to go back to school. And mm -hmm. this opportunity opened a door for me to go to the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to seminary there. Then in 1998, I was ordained as a deacon in, uh, uh, in our church. And then after one year, I was ordained as a priest. Mm -hmm. And now uh, when, I, when, I, when I joined ministry, I felt the urge to reach out to these young men and young, young women who are addicted to alcohol and drugs and who are in a, who are in a hard, hard position because they would want to live uh, the lifestyle that they are living but because of uh, uh, many things and many issues of, of life they cannot be able to do it. So I started this walk and started talking with them and engaging them one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one, which I even do it up, up to today. I'm one of those priests who can sit with drunkards and talk with them, not argue with them, but try to understand. You can enter a bar? Yes, I do. And a club and sit there? Ah, I can, As yes. they pour the drinks? And by give. the way, yesterday, yesterday, which is Sunday, because we have started another program, Valley of Hope, and that, uh, we, we went to a place here in Gidogoro. We sent a young man there, hmm. and uh, he went, he was preaching outside the pub, and the owner of the pub told the guy, don't preach outside there. Come, Come in. inside <laughs> and I will give you 30 minutes to preach to these people. And those 30 minutes, uh -huh. the report was, was coming that um, they, they were not drinking. He was not selling to them. And he, he was able to share uh, with them. Now, a Reverend, yes. you have quite a, an interesting story. And uh, let's get deeper into it. You've talked about um, going through um, getting mad with God. Yes. And uh, I would, for someone out there who is, uh, you know, watching you, someone is mad at God right now. Yes. So pissed. They're saying, maybe God doesn't love me. Maybe God doesn't care for me. What, what is it that made you not to, or to stop getting mad at God and actually change your life to actually become a reverend where yet once you're mad at the same same God what I what I did is that when this uh, when this issue or the reality of life came to me mm. and I realized that I will be the loser God will never lose I will be the loser and I started reasoning within myself mm. calling myself uh, in, in places where I can, I can reason out and see what has 10 years of drinking done to me? What has 10 years of smoking ban done to me and my life? Mm -hmm. I started to reason with myself and my heart. We, we say it calling a meeting within myself yeah. and evaluating mm -hmm. my life mm -hmm. and seeing from the time that I left school to where I am right now. Being mad with God does not help me. What about if I can reconcile with me? And then I had a very praying mother, a very, a very good praying mother. She mm -hmm. was praying for us. Mm -hmm. When uh, she, was, she became sick, when my, my, my dad died, she started praying. And I could remember in my mind those days in her life when she was on the ends of leaving this world, she was praying to God and asking God, 
God, how do I leave my children? And mm-hmm. being and me being in a in a in a drinking uh, uh, drinking mood, I could tell her, yes, you are going, but you are going to leave us in the hands of God. And you, sure, you, you told her that yes, when you were drunk. Yes, I was telling her, yes, you are going to go, but you are going to leave us in the, the hands, hands of, of God. God. And surely, God is a caring God. So He heard those prayers and. I have told you it was 31st of December 1985 when I realized that I have to reason my, with myself and see that the walk that I'm walking, the way that I'm going, I am going heading to destruction. Now, for after drinking for a decade yes. or so, uh, how did it change your life? That life of drinking and uh, you know addiction uh, to to drugs. How did it have an effect on your behavior and your character as a person? Uh, actually, uh, and this is the plain truth. Even those who are watching out there, I had turned out to be the young people you see around towns, mm. speaking very good English, and uh, learning from bar to bar. And being able to talk to people who have money and, you know, uh, to survive without a job and survive with alcohol, you have to be very smart. And that is why you see this, this guy, some of these guys who are addicted to alcohol and drugs, uh-huh. they are very smart They're people. Very, for you to survive in for alcohol, you, you must be, be, be very smart. Because yes. you, you don't have a job and you need money to get yes. a drink. Yeah. So you have to be smart so that you can be able to, to tell people stories, you know. Mm. Uh, these are some of the things, the survival mode. I knew the survival mode at that time. And um, I would make uh, contact with various people of influence, even those people who are around Kiambu at that time. Mm. If they can remember very well, some of them I would uh, even pop into their offices and talk sense to them. And I would come out with money from... Uh, what from, would you be go, getting into someone's office to tell them? And I could go even to the DC's office and tell him, you know, I'm a poor guy. You need, to, you need to go to the poor man's box. And he would ask me, who told you there's a poor man box at that time? And he would, and he would come out with something because there, was, there are those fans out there. I could go to our local politicians and I would tell them about the, the, the forthcoming elections and what is going on. I would, uh-huh. I would get also from them. So... A smart guy, and also I could do odd jobs here and there just to get money to go and to go and get the next drink. But the men who who you know tend to go to you know stealing, conmanship, you know, burglary, you know, and they get into uh, illegal activities to get money just to go and drink. I thank God because God protected me, maybe because of this day to tell them that you cannot be able to survive on that because it's wrong to steal from others and. Uh, I did not go into into that that position of stealing, mm. but I still in them I could uh, I could also advise them that this is not something that is worthwhile. You had your way of getting money. Yes, and I wonder how a politician will accept you because I thought I'm, aren't you drunk when you're knocking at that office? Have now? you ever seen drunken people dealing with politicians? They are more or less like them. <laughs> they're, 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 they're intertwined, yeah. <laughs> they're intertwined. Uh, Reverend, mm-hmm. when someone is uh, going through stress, mm-hmm. they normally tend to say, I need a drink. Was that the same case for you? Uh, I, I don't want to say that that was the same case with me mm. uh, because, you know, before you get into, into drinking, there are so many people with various reasons on why they turned to drinking. Yeah. There are those who are social drinkers. The social drinkers, they just take it for fun. Mm-hmm. There are those who cannot do away with it. They are, those, are addicted to it. They are, they are addicted to, the, to, to, to it. They, mm-hmm. they wake up. Their first, their first thing they want to get into is not a cup of tea. Mm-hmm. No, is it, they, they first start with a cup of water. Uh, because <laughs> they had they had learned the previous night uh, they were so drunk so the first thing they w- they will ask for is for a glass of water or a bottle of water then the next thing not a, not not something to eat but it will be now something to drink which will be alcohol 
and uh, that is a stage that is very 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 important to note mm -hmm. when you start to be addicted that you can do nothing without a glass of uh, of, of, of alcohol in the morning you are getting in, into a trouble another thing that i would want to mention to you is that yeah one drunk person affects so many people those around him hmm. affects the family affects the, the, the neighbors affects even the larger society mm -hmm. because one alcoholic one addicted person in the real sense of addiction he affects 15 people just within his circles and this effect can be either directly or indirectly yes uh, and, and and for you let me talk about how it affected you first of all mm -hmm. uh before i talk about your family and friends did it have any effect on your body on your health on your well-being as a person yes it had my health i did not go to the hospital because my health was uh, was bad but mm -hmm. health wise you could see even in yourself that this person is having a problem how how, how are you uh, i am not some i was something that no you you cannot be able to look at uh, to look at uh, you know <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, eh? but God has given you earlier on you, you, you said that God has restored yes that which was lost yes I told you that uh, I got saved when I was 28 years old mm -hmm. and uh, my dreams had been shattered because of alcoholism but when God when I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life right there the day that i did that that was 20th of february 1986 uh -huh. that was a day that i had a transformation of my mind even of my heart because i had an experience in itself i tell people even when i preach hmm. that i cannot be able to experience uh, explain to you what i felt because it was around 7:30 p.m. in the evening and I was walking along, along our, our, our local rural road and in, in Kiambu, you, yes, you in Kiambu. Kiambu. yes and I have I had an experience Jesus mm -hmm. himself appeared to me I tell people I cannot be able to explain this to you you, you saw him yes he came to me and Leah and told me with a very audible voice that the love that you have never found in the world is the love that i'm going to give you you're saying you saw jesus christ yes, one on one i experienced him i tell people i cannot be able to explain to you or write it down to tell you the experience that i had but i had a personal experience with christ what do you mean when you said you had that a, a, a transformation of the mind on the spot i i started i started realizing the life that i was living was not a, a life worthy the god who was calling me so what did Jesus tell you? He told me that he will take care of me. He will take, told me, I will love you. The madness that you had, and you had asked this question, how, how did I, how was I, I able to transform yes, the, yes. the madness and the goodness of God? Mm -hmm. So when Jesus appeared to me and I accepted him as Lord and Savior of my life, there is a scripture of a story that uh, is given in the Bible of about Jesus when he is elected. There were two disciples that were following Jesus when they were going to a mouse. There was Cleopas. One of them was named Cleopas. Uh -huh. The other one is say the Bible says was unnamed. His name was not mentioned. It's, it's in not the, recorded in the Bible. It's not recorded in the Bible. Uh -huh. So when Jesus appeared to me, I was reminded of this story, mm. and then I and I was I was convicted that this other person, whose name was not in, mentioned in the Bible, was yes. you. <laughs> and any other person who would want to follow Christ. So uh -huh. when I accepted him as Lord and Savior of my life, I was spirit-filled. And mind you, I, had, I was not going to church. You, no, no one preached to you? No one preached to me. But you were just I knew, walking on yeah, the road. Yeah, but I knew the story because in my school certificate, when I was doing my religious education, we were taught the Bible mm -hmm. uh, very deep by, by, by Roman Catholic priests in Kanunga High School. Mm -hmm. They taught us deep 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 bible so I'm, I'm looking at reverend how how that experience was for you on the road what about the environment how, how did, did, did people see you uh, you know did that is where i was th getting to those my... around uh, around you notice that hey there's something going on uh, going on with this gentleman that is what i was getting to mm. mr lamb mm. 
when I went home, mm. that I told you it was around 7.30. Yes. When I, when I went home and told my people or my brothers and my sisters and those in our compound what was going through my life, they started saying, this man has turned to be insane. What I was they talking about. They said you're insane. They said I'm insane. You look like a madman. Yes, when you're, a madman. Were you talking? Or, yes. Or, 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 things, can you remember what you're saying? The things, things you're saying. Things, good things to come even in my own personal life. Good things that will happen even to our family. You good are, things. You are speaking that this yes, will happen in yes, my life, this will yes. happen. Then, then the reality is spoken of today because they stopped saying that. They saw this is something that is not just for today. Mm -hmm. This is something that has happened. There is a transformation. So I changed. I, did, I started taking now even taking care of my own personal hygiene that is cleaning myself uh -huh. Uh -huh. even where i would i would sleep i started making my bed you know just the small things of life i started working so can someone have a life changing experience without going to church and can that this person uh who is watching you today yes. come out of alcohol addiction Yes. And, and get into Christ and how can, do, do they do it? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can be able. One thing is to admit that you have a problem. Because remember I told you, 31st of December 1985, mm -hmm. I accepted that I had a, a personal problem with, with alcohol and mm -hmm. any other intoxicating thing that, mm -hmm. thing that I would take. Right, the, right. The, the first step, just Accept. as we say, that the longest journey starts with the first step. The mm -hmm. first step, which is the hardest, the hardest is to admit I have a problem and I need help. Wow. So when one accepts that I have a problem and I need help, mm -hmm. that is the beginning of a journey in itself. The other thing that one takes is the step to say that the people of influence, people who have been leading me into what I'm doing, the people I have been relating with, I have to change my company. Mm. Those are the two basic things, uh, agreeing and then leaving some of the company because, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know... Change your friends. Yeah, change your friends. Because some of the alcoholics, the most people who influence them are the friends. And when they are drunk, when they get home, they say, I will leave this drinking. I will mm -hmm. leave this because it's leading me nowhere. But when they wake up the following morning and they join uh -huh. with their friends, they, they go back. They go back to the same old problem that is eating them. And how can someone stop, you know, taking alcohol, especially when someone who is, uh, you know, you, 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 you have been used to the culture of if I'm stressed, I take a drink. If I'm stressed, is it possible to come out of that norm? Yes, it is. How do you do it? By first agreeing, just as I, I told you, just Accept. accepting that I have a problem. Okay. Then still the same, same thing. Still the same. First accept you have a problem. And uh, this is where now I was coming to tell you also mm. that over the years, this, is, this, this passion of these people, I just did not create it in myself. Uh -huh. The Lord again put this burden on me to help people to help these young people uh, because when I was uh, recovering I did not have a wife I did not tell you that ah yeah? the you years the years the first the first eight years of my life from 1986 from 19 from, from when I left school okay and started now into a life that is not worth the living that people would find appropriate mm. even the, the girlfriends that i had when i was in high school mm. they came to a point where they they could not even relate with me they left you they left me some of them even uh, told me personally because you'll never end up being somebody mm. i have left you to go to somebody else and family uh, what about family even family has my family had abandoned also me you know because you know, my, I have, my parents had died. Mm. My brothers and sisters were, were ashamed of my life. But uh, 
it came to a time where they accepted me back when I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. You know, when you when you go for family meetings, family yeah. gatherings, yeah. how how was how, how do people? I don't know if if it it, it was the same whether you had family gatherings, but how do people re receive you? You know, um, in most family gatherings that I have attended, you know, the drunkard one yeah. doesn't have a say in anything. Those times I didn't have a say, but now most of the family matters. Now you have a say. I'm not the older. I'm 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 not the old of them, but. Not much can be passed without the resolution and the idea from the reverend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But back then, back, whatever you said, but, uh, they, they didn't matter. It didn't matter. Even when my mom was being buried, you know, when they came to KBC, that, at that time there was only KBC radio, you know? Yeah, to announce the to death. To announce the, the death, uh -huh. and there was people who are, who are doing it in the vernacular language. Yeah. My mother would be told, is the mother of this and this, mother-in-law to this and this person, uh -huh. and, and, and among many others. I was among so many others. <laughs> among many others. I was among many others. <laughs> you are the etc. Yes. And now they accept you. Yes. Because I accepted myself, just as I said, the first thing is to accept, accept your, that you yourself. Are, wow. You mentioned something earlier on about the upbringing mm -hmm. that you had mm -hmm. when your parents used to make the Muratina. Yes. How, what would be your word of advice for a parent who is watching you right now? They drink, you know how and, and how that parent affects or influences their child that is that is one of the most uh, bad things that a parent can do to a child don't give them don't give them alcohol don't even even show them don't do you drink n near them they shouldn't because uh, you are raising up a drunkard generation and I with all due respect mm -hmm. You can see the problem that we are in right now some of the alcoholics. Yeah, who are now Grown-ups if they can tell you every weekend some of them there was a culture here And I don't know whether it's still here a culture where parents would take their children to a nyama choma joint uh -huh. they would ask they would ask for beer and ask soda for children as they wait for the meat. Mm. But these children, the daddy or the mom would go to the toilet. They would sip some of these drinks. When the mom has left When the, the mom table. has left the table. They would see, what is this juice of daddy? And I tell my people, even those who are watching uh, from the diaspora, mm. I preach about it and I tell them, please do not put alcohol in your homes. Let me give it time. Talk to them directly. That's your camera. Yes. I tell those in diaspora, even when you go home, don't take beer in your homes because you will raise up a generation of drunkards without knowing. Because right now in Kenya, you might disagree with me or agree with me, but in Kenya, this generation was raised by parents who thought that they are giving ratio to their children, weekend ratios, but it has turned out to be a pandemic. And by the way, mm. I started talking about alcoholism in the year 2007 here in Kenya. Nobody was talking about it. I was telling them, now they were talking about AIDS. That was killing people. Uh -huh. I told them in, even in public forums, because that is the first rehabilitation I started in Kiambu, mm. a place called Kerigiti. Mm. I was telling them in, in five years time, here in Kenya, we will be talking about a pandemic of alcoholism here because it will have affected our country. And sure enough, mm -hmm. now the so. cry, especially in our Mount Kenya region, the cry there, go to Moranga, Go to any place within the central part of it. You'll see drunk people even at this time. We are talking about this. As early as now. It's as now early as now. 9.45 It is even late. Others are now have, not, have gone back to bed. Are <laughs> sleeping on the side of the road because of alcoholism. Hey, alcohol. Alcohol. When you, um, you, you say parents uh, go out with their kids and they go and they, you know, they... 
wanaona nya machoma mm -hmm. they sit on the table and and the uh, and, and the kids sit on the opposite uh, table they take alcohol the kids take sodas how should an outing be for a parent who is watching you uh, right now I would when, urge, if, if they want to go out with their child I would what urge, should they do i would urge us even as the community let us start up non alcoholic lit, uh, uh, places where families can come Eh? Mm. without even uh, without having alcohol that this would be safe places i don't mean it's bad to take children out but mm -hmm. let us find places where uh, it's an non-alcoholic uh, you know environment and we'll be able to save a generation do you at any point say that um however you are raised by your parents you'll f you feel like we can do better as a generation the way we are raising our kids nowadays yes we can yes we can mm -hmm. last uh last week i was preaching somewhere and i asked parents whether they were excited mm. that schools are being closed again <laughs> and <laughs> and they said they are not they are not <laughs> because now the freedom is not there yeah they have they, they are saying it, they are not because we have abandoned our responsibilities as parents ah. although although our parents brought us how they knew it mm. they could not even allow us to drink but you see we were drinking because they were sending us they were enabling us by sending us to do some of the jobs mm -hmm. that they were not, they were supposed to do as grown-ups but they did their part they took responsibility some of many of our generation did not go to boarding schools and i know say boarding schools are bad mm -hmm. parents had taken their own responsibilities mm -hmm. these days many parents have taken the responsibility to teach us and teachers okay. you've transferred your parental responsibilities yes. to your teachers yes. to take care of your child yes not many people can like this they when they close school because now they have closing school and by the way today i want to wish all those candidates yeah. who are sitting for their exams mm -hmm. I will, I, I'm, I'm wishing them well and i'm praying that we will also have people who will prepare a ground for them mm -hmm. that after secondary schools there were i think there were things that will be done so that we can not only be talking about making jobs for this generation but yeah, teach yeah, them yeah. on how to create create jobs for creative. themselves yes yesterday i had a preacher who said something that really touched my heart he said these days the people who are making it are the people who fail in exams because <laughs> when you fail you don't have any papers to go and show uh -huh. so you go and create your own job but those who pass with a's and b's mm -hmm. they are the ones who are out there drinking and trying to find jobs because they passed their exams and i mm. said wow oh. that is something but i'm not telling them not to do good mm. but it is also good to be creative and know that um uh there is hope let's we've talked to the parents let's talk to the youths there is a young man watching you right now yes who says that i can't i just cannot drink alone mm. or I can't stay alone and not drink. Mm -hmm. Well, young person out there, if you see me, see a testimony of what God can do to somebody who say, I have found a purpose in my life and in my work uh, for my future. Because your future, young person, is in your hands. It is you who can be able to take it, to make it, or it is you who can be who can be able to break it so you better make it than break it right right if someone wants to um indulge in you know they, they say and this is a quote from the bible you are you're a reverend i'm sure you know this verse enjoy mm. your youth while you still can mm. uh which is a verse many refer to mm. but they forget the last one there mm. and then they say they still in the bible it says that a little wine is good for your stomach. That was Timothy who was, that being, was ad Timothy. Timothy being advised by, by Paul. By Paul. Uh, there are many youths out, out there who are watching you right now, Reverend, and you know, they are wondering, okay, the Reverend is too old to, 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 to tell us about how our life is right now. Mm -hmm. You know, what would be your piece of, 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 of advice to someone who feels as though you do not understand him? 
you do not connect with him because that's the complaint of many young adults mm -hmm. many teenagers that you don't understand my position you don't understand what i am going through i am justified to drink the way i'm drinking because i have my own stress one thing they they need to understand is yes i am an old man hmm. and they should not uh, disregard that i was also young like them like wow you yeah. also you also there where yeah, they are i right was now. also there where they are we had our own excuses uh -huh. because as i told you i did my school certificate in 1975 and at that time we could get you could apply for a job and get a job mm -hmm. you could write an application and get a job but in 1978 uh -huh. the crisis of joblessness got into our country and uh, President Moy the Rate mm -hmm. uh, gave an order that 10%, every company had to employ 10% of their staff. And they did that. When they, when, when, when we, they were employed, the 10%, they were school, school certificate leavers, they would be employed as cleaners and subordinate staff uh -huh, uh -huh. and the director was one of those people who had uh, started before education the, the director of a company the director of the of, of the company especially parastatos they were they were they were they were appointees of of the of, government of, of <laughs> so these young people uh -huh. they started they started leaving those jobs so joblessness did not start in the era of uh, president uhuru kenyatta it started back then. It started way back. In the 70s. In the 70s. It was there. But we as the young people, many of us started thinking otherwise. We turned into, who, into what others have turned into today. Started making cheap alcohol. Started making changa. Started mm -hmm. selling it. Mm -hmm. And it became a pandemic just as the way it is. Until a time also, the Attorney General then who was Attorney General Charles Jonjo, mm -hmm. who is still, thank God, he's still alive. He can testify with this. He said that uh, he is going to legalize Changa. He legalized it. And we could sit comfortably in those, in those houses mm -hmm. and uh, we, could, we could drink it yeah? mm -hmm. executively. We could say executively. And it went down. You know, mm -hmm. the consumption of Changa went down. So what, what some of these steps, uh, if we all work together and believe that we are in this problem, all of us together, whether it is the church, mm -hmm. whether, whether it is the youth, whether it is the government, all of us, we work together as a team and address this just as the way we had started addressing COVID-19, all together in this in the world. We mm -hmm. can be able to overcome it. But if we bring, we put the brain, the brain game there, Mm -hmm. That these are old people, they don't understand, they don't understand it, us. you know, mm. and then we old people, we start blaming these young people that they are doing it ignorantly. You're too young, you don't yeah. know, you've not seen life. Yes, we will, we will fall into a pit that will be hard for us to take ourselves out of it. What is the role of the church, especially when it comes to removing people from alcohol and addiction? The role of the church is very minute. The church has done nothing. Most churches have done nothing. Yeah? They have done nothing concerning... Uh, these people. Why do you say so? Because I'm a witness of this. Not, have you ever seen many churches with programs mm -hmm. reaching out to alcoholics and, addict, and addicted people? You, I'm asking you this question. Yes. <laughs> you are, Remember, you are, you allow are, me not to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many churches have you seen uh. Uh, addressing this issue? When a drunk person gets into a church, how many whether, have you seen? Uh, I, um, I have seen the Catholic Church, Christ, tries to do it okay yeah uh the anglican church sometimes tries and i'm i'm not saying that because i'm an anglican but they try they try they try but not not as we are supposed to do and to me i would like i, I would say <laughs> just i have mentioned to you mr lamb that if we all do this together all yeah. this we do it together collectively collectively every one of us take responsibility that this is our problem yeah let's be able let's see how we can be able to handle it we can be able to fight 
this war together. So we, we need more engaging programs yes. for the youth and the community. Yes, yes. Also bring them. Bring them even on live, those who are drunk. Let them talk themselves out. Waseme shida zao zote. Waseme shida zao zote. Wagina tukai na wao. Kama vile ni meona umeka na wale ulikuwa na wao mbelendi. Come with people who have passion for them. Right. To show them that there is still hope. But still there's some who say, nakunya tukidogo. Yeah. You know, start conversing from there. Start the conversation from there. Uh -huh. Yeah. That is where you start the conversation. An example is in our prog in, in the programs that we have held, mm. there is one man who makes me very proud. Very, very proud. That young man, I went and picked him from the streets of Kiambu. Mm -hmm. He was so drunk. And I met him in a roundry, a roundry store. Uh, and uh, he was speaking to young girls who are, who are, who are, who are the, doing the customer service there. Mm. He was interested in them. You know, you can see a young man who is in, in, uh, interested in those girls. Mm -hmm. But the girls were telling, were making fun of him. When him Levy. Ah, there is nothing you can be able to handle. With. You, are, you are out. And I felt it. Yeah. And I said, well, young man, this, these young ladies are telling you the truth. None well, of them can accept you the way you are. But, but, but no one gets into addiction knowingly. It, you, you find yourself they addicted. All start, it all starts with the first drink. It all starts with the first drink. We have so many addicts out there who do not even know that they are addicts. Mm -hmm. So back to this story of this young man before we lose it. Yes, yes, yes. When this, when this young girl started confronting him, I, I talked to him and told him, guess what, young man? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow... If you allow yourself to go to a rehab, these young girls will one day accept you. He said, really? I mm -hmm. told him, yes. And he walked with me mm. to our rehab. We called it Grace House. Today, that young man, mm -hmm. do you know, he does hawking work in Kiambu town, mm -hmm. sells, uh, what do you call this? Earrings. Earrings, uh, small things for ladies. Mm -hmm. uh, all these things and guess what today he owns a car of his own wow. loan free wow loan free loan free loan so, free and he's he's so smart that even he's so smarter than me i tell i tell him i want to be like you when i grow up <laughs> <laughs> because of how smart he is these days i want us to finish this conversation reverend and i want to give you just a, a minute or so mm -hmm. Give a final word, a parting shot, a take home for someone watching you today. I would want to tell all of us that in the book of Lamentations, chapter number five and verse one, Jerusalem, there was a cry of what was going on because they had done evil in the eyes of God. Jeremiah was pleading to God to restore Jerusalem. Guess what? God heard the prayers of Jeremiah. We are in such a mood now. We are crying for the restoration of our generation. Let us hold on. Let us not throw away everything. There is hope. There is hope in Christ Jesus who can handle you as a young person. And I mean as a young person is a young girl, a young man who has fallen into this uh, habit, we call it habit, that has ruined your life and has tried to ruin your future. I want to tell you, make a decision, just as I said earlier, the first step can help you and you can have a future. God bless you. Thank you very much, Reverend. It's a pleasure. Amen. That is Reverend uh, Lawrence Mugwa, Emmanuel Angelican, uh, Anglican, wow, Emmanuel uh, Anglican Community Church in North Carolina. Amen. It's a pleasure having you, Reverend. We've, we've not, I, have, I have so much, but because of time, we have to end it there. Thank you so, so much for coming. Thank you. And you've said, you, you've talked about Jeremiah. Yeah. One word from me. Don't worry about, about tomorrow. Jeremiah Amen. said, for I know the plans I have for you, says yeah, the 29, Lord. 29, 11. 29, 11. Amen. Uh, plans <laughs> for hope and a future. Yes. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Amen. So don't go to that bottle. At yes. the end of the day, we want to see you, you know, having a bright future. And remember, don't drink and drive. Well, 
It has been a pleasure being with you today. I've had a fantastic time with the, uh, you know, the Reverend. I hope you've, you too have had the same. Make sure that you keep commenting on our social media pages. Uh, the hashtag is Y in the morning at Ramaguko and at Y254 channel. Well, that's up. It's a wrap. Thank you so much for being with us. For everyone uh, who, who made, on behalf of everyone who made this show a success, my producers, my directors, everyone, we say thank you so much. May God bless you. May God bless the work of your hands. My name is Ram Maguko. Keep it Y254. This is Y in the morning.